Does spring bar make the best spring bar tint? Today we're gonna look at four different tints that look a whole lot the same, and hopefully I'm gonna help you figure out which one might be the best canvas tint for you. Welcome to Outdoor Empire, where we do gear reviews on all kinds of outdoor gear from camping, hunting, and fishing. And we hopefully do all the testing and get all the stuff so that we can give you some ideas that will make the decision easier for you on what you're actually going to get. All right, so behind me, I have the four canvas tents that we're gonna be setting up today. Now, while Spring Bar was the first to come up with the design, much like there are many dome and hex tents out there, there are now at least four of this type of tent. These are the most well-known ones, the ones you might see in your local sporting goods store and certainly online. And so we're gonna look at how they go up. As I set these up, here's a few things you're gonna notice that are very similar among all of them. Besides the fact that they all stake down around the perimeter similarly, they all are going to go up similarly. Now, the nice thing about this tent design is that it has a flat roof. It's somewhat arched, but it's a flat roof. There are two springy bars or flexible steel rods on either end of the, each tent. And those connect with the, the roof top, the crossbar on top, as well as the two side down rods or poles at a T. And that those steel rods, those flexible steel rods are really what give it the, the unique design. That's what makes it go up so easily. That's what keeps your roof taut. It helps to shed water. It's, it's just a really great design overall. And it also means unlike a regular cabin tent or a wall tent, uh, that you might find in other canvas varieties, these go up very, very quickly. So despite not being freestanding, they do set up very easily. None of them really have an edge on this point because they really do all go up the same. Spring Bar has been making canvas tents since the 1960s. During that time, they designed this classic Jack style of tent. It's an excellent four season tent compared to a wall tent or a bell tent. It's very easy to set up and it doesn't, it's not near as heavy and bulky because you don't have as much stuff to carry around. Well, this design was so unique and interesting that once their patent ran up in the early 2000s, you started seeing some others that looked an awful lot similar. Please do note that while Spring Bar still makes a whole lot of tents in Salt Lake City and has even grown their manufacturing operation there, the Classic Jack 140 and the Classic Jack 100 are both made overseas. And that is to satisfy us, the customer, who would like to play, pay lower prices that are more on par with what you're seeing from these other competitors. Let's start with what is the same about all these tents? So a few things. One, they are all made of canvas. Two, they are all of a similar design. However, each of the poles are a little different and we'll look at that. And then another thing that's the same is that, well, they're all made in Utah or at least the companies are all, all designed them in Utah. These are actually all made overseas. They all have a lifetime guarantee of some sort. Now, there's always gonna be exceptions to these, especially things like mildew, mold, rot, and that can happen. That is one risk with these canvas tents is if you don't take good care of them and you don't dry them out before you pack them away, there is a decent likelihood that they will rot or have problems over time. So you do wanna make sure they are thoroughly dry. And if it's raining when you're packing up or they're still wet, hang them over the fence at home and let them dry out good. That way you won't have any problems next time. Before I forget, I made a little inquiry with each of these companies because lifetime guarantees are all well and good and that's all nice, but I'm curious about how they fulfill it. So I didn't have any problems with any of these tents yet, but I did decide to go ahead and email to just make an inquiry about a warranty. Just saying, hey, I, got, I recently got one of your tents. I'm just curious, if something were to rip, can I go ahead and do it myself or do I need to contact you first? So I basically just threw out an, a question Here's the results. Within 10 minutes, I had a response from Spring Bar, very friendly and thorough and gave me the information I needed and I was on my way. Excellent, very quick response from Spring Bar. Kodiak Canvas, also very responsive, even had, I think, a happy face emoji in it and they responded within, I think it was 45 minutes, so totally acceptable. I got an automated response from Teton saying they're short-staffed and they'll get to me when they can. And then I also haven't heard anything from White Duck Outdoors. Now that doesn't need a make your purchase decision, but I thought it was a little bit of interesting insight. You might wanna know, and that was what I found out. Now that we start to talk about the differences, here we have the different bags. This is how these things come, and this is how you pack them up. Here we have the Teton Mesa. Now I, I do like this design. This little bag is actually like a burrito style. You roll the thing up, you put it in the center, the side flaps flap over, they got, these have some really nice, good quality webbing and buckles. You buckle them together, then you put this other flap over. There's three buckles on the side. You just wrap it up like a tight little burrito. 
And it's got some nice handles to carry it a number of different ways, including a shoulder strap. And then you've got a nice pole bag and a stake bag made of kind of that PVC and some canvas. Kodiak is very similar. Almost the same design for the burrito bag and also decent materials. Good enough anyway. I'd say the materials on the Teton are slightly nicer. But then you have a, a decent pole bag of canvas and a stake bag. So everything you need. Now, the Teton does go smaller because the poles break down in thirds instead of halves. And so that probably is the most compact, but just by a hair. So it's not a big difference. And these are all, I should say, 10 by 10 tents. The White Duck Proto Tent is also a 10 by 10. However, the Spring Bar Classic Jack we have is a 10 foot by 14 foot. So here's the White Duck bag, a nice oversized bag. That does make it easy to get it in, even if you don't want to be extra careful about tighten it up. PVC bottom so you can drag it around and not worry about it. Although the buckles on here are pretty cheap, I don't expect them to last very long. You got a good bag for the poles with some PVC reinforcement on the bottom. What I really like about theirs is actually this. This is their stake bag. It's made of that PVC material. It rolls up in itself that you can organize. They include a mallet. No one else does that. I really like that. Besides the big stakes, and I'll show you those, they also have these little stakes. And then on the spring bar, you get sort of a big, you know, army duffel style bag with all these handles around. And at first I thought they looked odd, but wow, is it handy. In fact, I think this is the probably the easiest one to chuck around in the car and out of the car, etc. Um, and then you got a decent pull bag with a good zipper and your stake bag. What I also like about them is opposed to just some scrap material to tie around to roll it up real nice, you have these really good cinch straps. Nice webbing, nice aluminum cams, that works excellent. All right, let's start with the awning. So here we have the Teton Mesa. What I like about the awning, they have some good polycord and they got these little, uh, whatever you call these, to tighten up your rope. You have straight poles that break down into three sections, stay together with some cable in the middle. Nice canvas awning, and then the same on the other side, of course. And then they also have some grommets along the side. So there you could tie something up. You could tie a tarp up if you wanted to have a, a side panel here for some shade or something, you could do that. It rolls up, and when you roll it up, you've got these ties. It just loops around and hooks into that little loop. On the White Duck Prota, we have, you got some little bit cheaper quality rope, but it work, does the job. And then these cams also work fine. Now they have two piece poles. Their poles are aluminum and that goes for all the poles all the way around, but they do just fine. And then you have some Velcro along the sides because they sell some panels that you can just Velcro up there to have side panels. The way you tie it back is similar, just a little bit different hardware there. On the spring bar, you have galvanized steel rods. These might actually be aluminum, I'm not sure. What I do like about these that the others do not have is it is adjustable, so you have this little notch thing, you can raise it or lower it. That's nice. What I really like to do, especially when it's raining, is you want to lower this. So on most of these others, I just have to do this, but here I can actually lower the pole. And because rain will pull up here, I almost would just roll it up if it's really raining, but you might want to sit under there. You just have to be aware of that. Now they also have zipper here for their accessories they sell separately if you wanted side panels. And then they have a nice rope and a cool looking and very functional little wood Deal. Finally, we have the Kodiak canvas. This is probably the simplest of all simply because it doesn't have anything on the sides to attach accessories. So just be aware, um, there's nothing fancy for that. I'm sure you could rig something up if you wanted. Similar poles to some of the others, except it's two piece galvanized, no frills. They got this little functional plastic deal that works. It's um, maybe not quite as nice as the others, but it does the job. Now we're going to look at stakes and poles. That's the stake for the Teton Mesa. A little bit different design. And even after I just seasoned my tent, I did see little rust spots on some. So I don't expect that to last forever, but they're also easily replaced. The way they attach is like so. It's got some webbing and then this elastic band. Now that elastic band, I was a little bit worried about it over time, but I could probably drive the stake straight through the webbing if I wanted. And uh, it does a job. I guess it gives a little spring. It's probably a fine thing. And then the poles, they are all steel galvanized poles. They do break down into thirds instead of halves like all the other designs. So it does pack up a little bit smaller in your car. And then you've got your T-post. The male end is here. This is a female end. And then you've got your flex rods or, that are steel, but painted in a primer gray to try to prevent corrosion. We'll see how long that lasts, but it's pretty decent. All right, on the White Duck Prota, you have two stakes. This is unique because the stakes have grommets in there, and we'll talk more about the floor in a bit, but it's a bathtub fl tub floor. So you actually have the option for two stakes like I put here, which is kind of neat. Probably really good for winter and for 
good waterproofing. A big heavy duty stainless steel stake is the main stake. These are the same on the Kodiak and on the spring bar. And then you have this smaller stake. And so it's just meant to go into these elastic things to sort of pull out that the edge of the wall, make sure water sheds away from it. That combined with the fact that the floor comes up like bathtub style is unique on this tent and it probably is a very good thing when it's really wet. Their poles are also different than everybody else's in that they are aluminum. They're also a larger diameter. So I wouldn't say with this aluminum, you're actually saving any weight. Apples to apples, this is one of the heavier ones, at least anecdotally. They're still nice poles. They break down into two, they go in that big old bag. Here's your T-post, also male end is here, female there, and then you've got your flex rods that are actually, I think, galvanized steel on this one. So that's nice. On the spring bar, you have similar stakes to what I just showed you on the white duck, but you have a different style of how it attaches. You got these nice sturdy metal loops, a rope inside this canvas. It's, it, it's actually a simple but very clean design that also pulls that wall out to the side so water will shed away from the tent. And I think it's very functional and clean. Now the poles on the side, the, all their poles are galvanized steel. These break down actually into three pieces because it's also adjustable. So that's nice to get it the right tautness you want. And then up here, what's different too is the, the male end is here, the female end there. I found that actually makes it a little bit trickier to get it aligned when you, when you stand it up, but it is in no way a deal breaker. And then you've got galvanized spring rods. Here you have on the Kodiak, a very similar idea. These are the same stakes as the others, but you've got a metal ring attached to webbing that goes sewn in right in between the canvas and the polyvinyl floor. You have these galvanized steel poles that break down into two sections. And then actually here too, what's neat is this ties in, there's a little nubbin that comes straight up to catch that pole. And that's a nice little feature to get everything placed right and nice and taut. And then up here, they have the male end on this as well, female on the pole. Black spring rods that are just painted with, you know, a primer black. Most of them have some little caps on the ends to try to keep from poking tall people in the eye. We'll see how long they stay on there. One other thing that's different about the pole system is the roof bar. So on the Mesa, I, I don't like the design of the Mesa. The white duck tent, the spring bar, and the Kodiak tent, their crossbar on top comes in two sections and then there's a a larger diameter pipe essentially that slips over the two to kind of give you your, your rigidity. And it works very well, it's very simple. The Teton one, it actually is all connected but has this sort of buckle in the middle, hinge thing, uh, and you gotta use a couple little cotter pins to sort of set them. And it's kind of tricky to do, very likely to pinch your fingers or lose a fingernail at some point. And it's just kind of hokey. Plus you're gonna get a bunch of grime on those things that is gonna get onto the roof at some point. Anyway, I didn't like that design, that part of the design, but it, it still functions, it does the job. When it comes to the canvas itself, the canvas on all of these is, there might be one exception, but most of them have just an eight, eight and a half ounce canvas walls. They're all cotton duck canvas. They're a very similar quality and, and all feel very good to me. And then most of them, they'll have a 10 ounce canvas roof. And that's because on the roof it, with sun over time, sun is your enemy here. It could degrade these things, especially if you leave them out for extended periods of time. If you're looking at these for a glamping situation or something, then do be aware that might break down over time. And some guys will, will put, you know, tarps over top or build some structure over top just to make these last for decades if they're up all the time. Now, if you're just camping occasionally or a few times a year or even every month, but you're not leaving it up all the time, I'm not really gonna worry about that. Let's talk about doors. So on the Teton Mesa, you have one large D-shaped door. I really like this door, actually. I like that there's just one big door on either side, here and here. When you open it up, boy, is that a large opening so it's very easy to get in and out with gear but also if you just use the window on the other side you just have nice big windows and you have a few fewer things that can potentially fail these tie back similarly with a little loop here and a little catch and a buckle there on the white duck proda it is a bit different so this has a window here and on this side you have actually a zipper on both sides it is not a d shape it is just a big rectangular door with Velcro on the bottom. This is the only one that doesn't have a zipper on the bottom. It's only that Velcro. And to be honest, I don't love that. 
I have found, you know, especially with kids, and look, grass stuff gets stuck to it. It's not gonna stay sealed, especially if you're in a place with snakes and other vermin you don't wanna get in there, that's a risk. I don't love that. They do have a decent threshold though that'll keep some of that stuff out. But what is handy about this style door is that when it is up, you can roll the whole thing up and just have a nice big opening. It has its trade-offs. Not the worst design, it's very functional. The white duck has an equivalent door on the other side, just caddy wampus from it. Now on the spring bar, this is my favorite door to be honest. Oh, some of these take two hands to get the zipper started. But this is my favorite door. It is just a classic unzip on the bottom, unzip on the top, opens in that sort of triangle style. And the other thing I like about it is that it has a separate screen door. So that's got its own zippers. You can tie the screen door back like I have it now, or you can close the screen door and tie this one back using the same ties. I really like it. It's plenty large to get in and out. In fact, it kind of closes on its own when the kids don't close it, which is most of the time. That's just a big window on that side. It is not another door. Frankly, I don't really see a need for two doors. And in fact, the downside of having two doors on these tents is that you always end up losing the use of one because you've got beds along there or gear. And I really like that on the spring bar. Now on the Kodiak, this is kind of like a combination of the Teton and the White Duck. You have just a window on this side and you have just the D-shaped door here instead of a rectangular shorp, so it's like a half D. I should also mention that this is the Kodiak Flexbo Deluxe, so you do have this window here. Even the basic has a window here, but the door also has a window in it. In the standard or basic version, I think you don't get a window here, and it's a little bit cheaper. And to be honest, that'd probably be fine. But there you have it, a D-shaped door. It does have a zipper on the bottom with still that a similar threshold to the white duck. And it's got a nice big D-shaped opening that ties back similarly with that sort of nubbin and a loop. So what's my favorite door? It's the spring bar. Next, I'd probably say the Teton and then the Kodiak and then the white duck. Now it's not that I, any none of them are bad. And I should say this, no matter what decision you make, you're gonna be happy with these tents. They're all very nice and worthy of your use. Okay, let's talk about windows and ventilation. So here on the Teton Mesa, you have the door and then you have a big window in the door. And that's it. You got some decent no mesh, totally functional. You've got, I think they're number 10 zippers on the door and they're probably number eight or a size down on the windows. I should also mention on the zippers, that is an SBS zipper. So it's not a YKK. The only one with YKK is actually the white duck. These other three have SBS, which is sort of a Chinese equivalent. Still good quality, works fine. That's the window situation here. Two big windows, one on this side, and then of course one on that side in the door. And on the Teton, they don't. They only have one version. They don't have a deluxe or a, an upgrade. So that is what it is. But they also have these ventilation little zips up here in the top on both sides. That's a handy feature. It's covered by canvas on the outside, so it'll ventilate. So when it's hot, you open those up, let the hot air out. All right, on the white duck, and this is the white duck deluxe, it should be said on the standard version, there aren't these side windows, all right? I think it's just plain solid walls on the side, but you still have on the normal version uh, a big window, and then the door turns into a window as well on both sides. One thing I notice about this, all the other tents in this batch have a pretty light colored roof, especially the spring bar. Spring bar is the lightest colored roof, so it's the brightest inside. The next is the Kodiak, which has a very light gray roof. So this has a darker roof, you'll notice, a dark gray canvas roof. So it's actually quite a bit darker, plus that with the kind of olive, it's darker inside as well. Now you might like that if you don't like light getting in or you camp in light spaces at night, you like a blackout type of tent, this is good for that. The others are gonna be brighter but in the daytime, it doesn't let in quite as much light. Might help it stay cooler, but in the winter, it might help it stay colder and you want it warmer. But anyway, you, you've got these nice huge windows on all sides. When you open all these windows up, I mean, you got more ventilation than you need, really, but th it's great. The white duck does not have the vents up top, but it's got plenty of windows and they can all be rolled up at the bottom if you wish in that good no -seam mesh. On the spring bar, you have a lot of windows as well. You have these cool triangle windows on the ends. And this one we're gonna look at in a bit, but this panel, you see this other zipper here, it actually, the whole thing comes out so that we can convert it into a hot tent, and we'll look at that in a bit. And then you have 
this Gigantor window on this side, which I absolutely love. Let's tons of light in, tons of ventilation. It does not have the vents up top, but I don't find that totally necessary. You'll also notice when we came in, much lighter because you have this same color canvas all throughout. It's that nice light off-white canvas. And then you have another window up front. And of course you can open the doors and close the screen. So in that case, we got one, two, three, four, five windows one of which is gigantic. Lastly, we have the Kodiak Flexbo. This again is the deluxe version. So we essentially have two big windows on either side, one of which on either side is built into the door. And so with that, plenty of light. Again, if you had the basic version, you would not have this window. There would only be the one window there and then the one on the opposite side on the opposite side. You also have the vents similar to the Teton. So a nice little feature, plenty of ventilation, and you have a lighter roof, and the roof panel is a lighter color than the walls or anything else, which lets some great ambient light in. I prefer the lighter roofs. Some might like a darker roof. The mesa is in the middle. So now we're gonna talk about the floor in each. So this is the floor in the Teton Mesa. It's a nice polyvinyl uh, PVC type flooring that's sewn in directly to the wall. It is not a bathtub style, but it feels quite durable. Maybe you should use a ground sheet, Sometimes if it's really rough ground, but overall it's not gonna be an issue. One thing I noticed in this one more than I did in the others is there are some seams that aren't perfectly sewn. You get this in a few places, lots of threads left over. Here's another spot that's not perfect. It's a little bit nitpicky, but these are some differences I noticed. Looking at the floor in the white duck. Now this is one that's unique. It has the bathtub style floor that goes up two or three inches on the side. And as I showed you outside, it has the extra stakes if you wanna pull that out, if you know you're gonna have a lot of rain or snow. A similar floor, these are like 16 ounce PVC polyvinyl floors, very durable. The workmanship in here I think is really good. You know, everything's double stitched, everything looks really clean. I did season all of these tents in my backyard, meaning I just watered them down because in the manufacturing process, especially along seams, sometimes you'll see little air through them because you need to hose it down just to let those cotton fibers swell up and fill all that so you don't get any leaks when you use it the first time. And I haven't had any problems with any of them. Good quality stitching, nice quality floor in the white duck. Now let's look at the spring bar, the brightest one of all. It really is noticeably lighter in here. It also has a lighter colored floor. It's kind of this pale greenish color. And it is a nice polyvinyl as well. To be honest, it might be a little bit thinner than some of the others but totally sufficient. The floor is sewn right into the canvas wall and from the outside, it sheds water away from the walls as the stakes pull outward on it. The quality of the like stitching and things in here is excellent. I mean, double stitching all around in a few places, maybe more so. There's no weird spots. There's not really anything sticking out. I felt like it was very good quality. And lastly, on the Kodiak Flexbo, this floor is a very nice material as well. I'd say similar, if not identical to the others. A good polyvinyl 16 ounce floor with a very solid hem around the edges. It's not a bathtub style, so it just wall floor meets right at the ground. And the quality in here I'd say is excellent also. Good double stitching all around, no concerns. You don't see really any flaws. I think it's a great piece of work. In the Teton Mesa is where we're at right now. And I wanted to just show you what it looks like. They say these are six person tents. This is a 10 foot by 10 foot. It's the exact same size as the Prota that we have here from White Duck and the Flexbow from Kodiak. The spring bar is a 10 foot by 14 foot. It's supposed to be an eight person tent. So we'll look at what that looks like a little closer in there. But here we have six bags in here. One, two, three, four, a little snug next to each other, but not bad. And then two kids could fit on the floor. I have a family of five and we can sleep in these just fine, even with a dog. But if I had one more person, it'd be too much or we'd just be really, really crammed. And these people at the bottom in any of these tents are going to have to be playing footsie all night because they're just gonna be so darn close or they have to be just really short like kids. So that could work out. So basically these 10 foot by 10 foot arrangements, these are all going to be very comfortable for four, doable for five with some gear, tight for six, but doable if, if you really mean it. And anything less, like two people, it'd be just uh, luxuriously roomy. While we're in here, let's also talk about some of the unique features of the Teton Mesa. So here you do have a little port, a little special zipper port 
pour an electrical cord or a propane hose or a heater at night, go out to a generator. You actually have one on both sides. Don't know that's ever gonna be totally necessary, but you have it. The nice thing about this is they actually include with the package, these organizers. There's a set, you know, kind of a big pocket, dirty clothes or something. Here you can put your flashlights and your clean clothes or whatever. They all attach with these nice metal rings. So those are really sturdy, really solid. And in the corner here, there's like color coding. You wanna get that in the right corner. Cause what I like about this loft that the others don't have is got this little drawstring so once you start to weigh it down with stuff which you know that doesn't weigh much but you know some clothes or, or a little bit of lightweight gear or jackets things like that you can cinch that up and it'll keep it upright instead of falling off or bothering you by hitting your head all the time now I'm 6'1 and that is an issue for me if there's any gear up there but that's the same in all of these but I have plenty of headspace above, almost a foot, I'd say, in here. Very roomy vertically. And what's really cool about these organizers that they give you, they actually give you two sets of each. So I have more, they're down in the corner. But a whole other set of organizers here and you can put another loft up here. So plenty of storage if you're gonna be staying for a while. And that's kind of unique to this Teton Mesa that they put so much in there. On the White Duck Prota tent, one thing White Duck does well is accessorizes. I haven't used this, but they do have this ground sheet you can put under the thing that's sized for this tent. So that's very convenient. If you know you're staying on rough ground like rocks or maybe in the winter, or maybe you just don't like to have to wait till the bottom dries off before you roll it up, that's a good option. They also make these nice canvas tarps. This thing is solid. I don't remember how many ounces, but it's a heavy canvas. It's treated, even has little reflectors on the sides if you want to throw it over something on your trailer or whatever. But what I like it for is just to have this little rug outside, kind of wipes your shoes off, but they have lots of accessories. We also have a dog bed from them that is awesome. And it's so easy to, to clean off. You just dust it off. I mean, my dog comes in dirty at night from running the creek and everything. There's mud and dirt on it, the, his bed in the morning, and you just take it out and you sweep it off. Fantastic. And then they make things like uh, firewood carriers and stuff like that. I don't have beds set up in here, but it would look the exact same as the Mesa because it's the exact same footprint. We already talked about the bathtub design that is unique and kind of a real pro of this. It's also the darker roof and darker materials, which is great for people who like it to be real dark at night when you sleep. And maybe it would help keep it a little cooler in the summer, maybe, maybe not actually, I don't know. It's kind of sixes. Besides that, I don't have any organizers. They don't include organizers with the kit when you buy it. Actually, all the uh, three others include something, but they do have plenty of these rings. These are plastic rings instead of metal, like on the Teton. Not quite as tough, but honestly, they're gonna be just fine for anything you'll use them for. They're all around. They do have some storage and you don't have any of this in the Teton. Maybe that's why they try to make up for it with extra hanging organizers. But you do have these, which are great for the kids to stick their Kindle or their flashlights at night. And you also have that electrical cord access point where you can run it in without leaving a door open. But these doors are already kind of open because of that darn velcro at the bottom but so it is those are the main features of the interior of the white duck proto tent i wanted to point out one thing too we haven't used this a whole lot yet and i came in and found this that's one of those little buckles that's supposed to help you tie back your door or whatever it just busted so that's not a great sign of high quality components or whatever but also not a deal breaker i'm not gonna put up a fuss about that now we are in the spring bar classic jack remember this is 40 square feet larger it's 10 feet by 14 feet and so here I have it laid out, four beds. There's two cots, two sleeping bags in the middle. Kids are smaller people, that would be totally fine. Might be a little tight for grown snoring adults. Here I only have three more pads, but you could see where you could easily get another one. You could totally do eight people in this. It would be a little tight and don't plan on having much, if any, gear inside. But with our family of five plus dog, we have ample space for people, dog, gear, and even walking space. So that's a fantastic layout. I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit when I show you this can be a hot tent. Organizers, so this has a loft that's included. And that's another great place just for lightweight things like hats and gloves and socks and whatnot. It's got these nice metal rings to put more organizers. You could easily run a thing of polycord across any of these just as a clothesline to dry things out. And then it's got some built-in storage here. It also has some down low for your floor sleepers. Plenty of places to stick all those quick access items you want at night. And then you have your electrical cord or propane hose access point. 
And again, these all have, except for that white duck, zippers at the bottom of the doors. They all have thresholds to try to keep the gunk out, and that's all a good thing. And the other big feature of this one I do really like is I really like that lighter color material just because it is so bright in here. It's fun to wake up to the sunrise like that. Let me point out, one thing we do when we're camping is use cots in here because one, it's super comfy for mom and dad, but two, you have lots of this gear storage under here. So this is where we end up putting everybody's bags of clothes and whatever other stuff we wanted to store in here. Last one is the Kodiak Flexpo. This is also the 10 by 10. And so the floor plan would look the same with six over there, but a very comfortable four or two or even five or somewhere in between. They do include some organizers, similar to the ones in the Teton Mesa. Got sort of like a laundry bag gear organizer up top and a loft here. And you'll notice there's that issue where you get this saggy loft system going. So if you put a lot of weight there, this is just gonna hang really low. Teton tried to solve that by cinching it up. This only comes with one set of each as opposed to two, but they do have these little pockets built in as well down low. And the Teton does not have that. Besides that, you do not have an electrical cord port on here. I'm not gonna make a buying decision on that myself because you could easily run that in through the zipper door and just zip it tight around it. That's not a big deal to me, but it doesn't have it if that's something you're interested in. And this is also available in a VX version where you get additional windows on the ends. You have some additional loops. These are the plastic loops, much like the, the white duck that you can tie a clothesline to or whatever. So as hinted at before, there is one major unique factor about the Spring Bar Classic Jack 140 that you don't find in these other 10 you also don't find it in the Spring Bar Classic Jack 100, which is the 10 foot by 10 foot size. You can also get the Kodiak, the White Duck, and the Teton in a 10 by 14 size. So same size as the Spring Bar, but without this hot tent or stove tent capability. So I just set it up. Let's take a look at how that goes. So that window panel that was in there, I pulled it out from inside. I'll show you that inside. But here we insert with this heat resistant panel. It Velcros on the outside to make sure water still sheds away. There's this nice, you know, this baffled pipe section as well as this five foot chimney with a spark arrestor on the top. So even when uh, you're on certain public lands, like forest service lands, sometimes during fire seasons, they may have fire restrictions where there's no fires at all, or you can, as long as you've got a stove, a chimney and a spark arrestor. That was the case where I just went about a month ago and this worked. So heat resistant panel. It also has these ties to bring that wall back taut against the, the pole. Just keep it away from the heat source. And then there's this cable that just provides a little extra support to that chimney and ties into the spring rod up there. So that's it from the outside. This is when you feel like you're really living large, especially if it's cold out. So here we've got it set up, brought a chair inside. Here's our stove. You've got this fireproof mat below it. I got this little bag. That's actually a white duck canvas firewood bag. Brought in a few pieces. And then here's our wall. So that panel zipped out here. Here is our window panel that's normally in there. Then it goes all the way to the floor and it ties in with some little loops down at the bottom. This you do have to cut out when you get it from the, the factory, but they give you great patterns and excellent videos. It's easy to do. We've got this flue pipe here, adjustable flue. That's how you're gonna adjust your heat. You've got a 45 degree baffled pipe, and then you've got another 45 and it goes straight out. When you buy this from Spring Bar, you get all the things you need in the kit. This is a Winterwell Woodlander stove, the medium size, and it heats this tin up hot. Now I don't have a fire going right now, but there's a look inside, very compact has this on the top where you can remove that to get your fire started. That was very convenient. So this gets real hot. You could cook on there a little bit, warm up some water at the very least for some hot cocoa or tea or coffee. Has this rod to manipulate everything because when that's hot, you're not going to be touching anything. And then there's also a, this air inflow on this stove. Three feet, this is stainless steel, extremely lightweight, and it is extremely functional as well. And this is what the tent looks like when we're sleeping with my family of five and have the hot tent set up. So we can have a table in there, play some cards at night, but we have two kids in the middle, mom and dad on the sides on the cots, and then another kid down here with the dog, or the dog might go right over here. But even with all that, this is hard to beat right here. If you're out at hunting camp or you're out in the fall or the early spring or even winter, this is an awesome setup. And now you can't get a hot tent setup in any of these other tent designs because Spring Bar really went through the effort to make a system that would be easy to figure out. Now there's DIY solutions. I'm sure you could do something on those other tents, but this is a pretty turnkey, simple to use, very quick to set up and install and, and you're in business. So the biggest differentiator 
here, I'd say, of this Spring Bar Classic Jack is that hot tent capability. And boy, is it awesome, especially if you're serious about four season camping. There you have it. You just got a very thorough tour of four different canvas tents, all of a similar style, of a similar structure and design, but each with their own unique features. Which one will you pick? Tell us in the comments. I'd love to hear. Which one will I pick? Well, this year is probably going to be that spring bar because I'm really interested in using that hot tent when it gets real cold in these mountains in Idaho. However, any of these will do. I like something about all of them. I really like the price and the availability of the Teton Mesa. I also like the doors on it. I like how compact it is. I like the white duck prota. I like how the, the quality of how it's made, all the accessories that go along with it. I really like that bathtub floor that's going to keep you dry in probably any conditions. It's also darker, so that could be really nice for you people that need to sleep in a very dark room at night. I really like the Kodiak because I had one years ago. I ended up selling it when I moved overseas for a while and now I've got one again, but that's just a really quality tent. You can find them around and they have great customer service as you saw in my little experience. And then of course that spring bar is the OG of this tent design and it's still a fantastic tent. And if you really like them, they even still make the US made versions. They do cost a bit more, but you're gonna get the finest craftsmanship you'll find in a canvas tent. Be sure to check all of these out. Do your research. Hopefully this helped with your research. Maybe it's the last bit of research you needed to make your decision. If that's true, consider using our links in the description below. That really helps support the channel. What canvas tent do you like the best after seeing all of that? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please let us know and also the YouTube algorithm by hitting the like button below. Also subscribe to our channel. We do lots of gear reviews on all things outdoors and we'd love to see you back again. If you're interested in seeing a more detailed review on any one of these, we do have individual review videos for each. Check those out. And finally, if you do decide to buy one or you're thinking about it or you just want to check what the price is today, do click on one of the links in our description below. That helps out the channel as well. Thanks for all your support. I hope you enjoy this video and happy camping. And, and one last note. You can't go wrong with any of these. If you get one, you're gonna be happy with it. Proceed. Mm -hmm.